Good evening, everyone. Hello. Welcome to the Castro Files. How are, How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank You're you. Fantastic. Yeah. Again, we've got another cool. This one's going to be a little bit interesting. It's it's more like kind of just like what happens to people in general. It's not it's scary. It's as more much unexplained as, than it's unexplained. scary. Okay. Yeah. Those so are good. the one that I'm going to talk about tonight it's called the Fugue State. The Fugue. The fugue okay. State of Mind. It's like. We'll get into it. All but right. first, I'm thank excited. you guys so much for jumping in and joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Yes. As always, you can go out, like, subscribe to the Castro Files channel. You can find all of our podcasts and everything out under the bars open with Beth and Greg if you want to listen to the audio versions of these as well. So yes. we download them generally on Sundays and Tuesdays. We'll have a show. I'll do one on Sunday and then Beth does one on Tuesdays. Yep. So it's always fun. You've got for Beth's got a great one lined up for this week yep. for Tuesday come, or this week coming. So it's going to be awesome. It's really fun. I'm excited about that. So again, go out, like, subscribe, give us a little reviews and ratings. Absolutely. Follow us, share us. Definitely share it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Want to definitely do that. So let me jump into ours. Okay. Or to my story. Sounds good. Mind. All right. So fugue state. Mm -hmm. It's it's basically a disassociative state that people end up in. They find themselves in these states, right? So you may have heard of it. It's called amnesia in many cases. Oh, okay. Right? But it's a state of mind that actually makes people, you forget, but you also to shut off and then you'll end up fleeing. You'll go to a different place. You'll just get up and leave. Right. So last week we talked about where you have people just missing. Right. These people aren't, they're missing, but they're also missing their memories and everything that goes into these. So um, I'll give you a little bit of background of what disassociative, disassociative, I can't say the word. Now. Disassociative fugue state is formerly called fugue state or psychogenic fugue. Okay. is a mental or behavioral disorder that is classified uh, variously as a dissociative order disorder, a uh, conversion disorder, and a somatic symptom disorder. All words that are fancy Big psychiatrist words, words right? Yeah. But the, the disorder is a rare psychiatric phenomenon characterized by, by reversible amnesia for one's identity, including the memories, personality, and other identifying characteristics of individuality. The state can last for days, months, or longer. Wow. The associative fugue usually involves unplanned travel or wandering and is sometimes accompanied by the establishment of a new identity. So basically, you don't know who you are. You just you snap out of whatever your normal state is. Uh -huh. You go into this altered state, right? And, and there's then, nothing that preempts this. It's, a lot of what I've read about it, and I kind of went down a rabbit hole on this uh, today, and a lot of it is stress derived. Okay. Right? Where people are just under immense stress, just work. It's or almost like they have a little life. mini snap. Or it could be there, there's even cases where if you were a soldier and you've gone through like lots of tra trauma from right. war and stuff like that, or if you grew up in an abusive household, mm -hmm. like it can come back later in the year, in years, in okay. years after, Interesting. right? Where you start, your brain's just trying to go through it. Right. right? So. It really, there's there's signs and symptoms of it. It can be depression. It can be stress. There's a lot of things that can happen and cause it. The, there's, It's very, very rare that it happens, though. Okay. And when it does, you'll have people that'll be, you know, just going about their daily life, just driving down the road, and all of a sudden they find themselves 10 hours later in another state, literally in another state, not knowing what happened, not knowing how they got there, Wow. Right. And it's, you imagine? it's just one of those situations or they wake up to, they snap back, snap back to reality. Right. Um, two weeks later or two months later yeah. or 12 years later, 12. Yeah. Like this can last for years and years. So I'm going to go through Gosh. a case of Hannah up here in a minute. Okay. But this is also very kind of it. There's a movie everybody's seen that it's this similar state. And it's Jason Bourne. Okay. Right. And there is it the Jason Bourne movie, as you see the image there, right? It was also um, a situation that happened years and years and years and years and years ago. I'm talking, okay. I'm talking like a hundred plus years ago, okay. and that's where the state is named after. So we'll get into that here in just a second. Okay, um, but it basically comes from that, and it's a real life situation. Hmm, interesting. So, of course, my article just disappeared. Give me one second. Sure. 
Because that's how things go, right? Of course. Absolutely. Um, but there are lots and lots of, of cases of fugue state. Like I was saying, um, I just got to find the article again. There's not lots of cases, but there are cases. Because if it's rare. Well, it's rare, but it, it still It happens. occurs enough to yeah. make it. Okay. Let's see if this is the article. You can always go to there history, too. And we're back. <laughs> Took a minute there to get the article to come oh, up. So technology. a life interrupted there on the go. New York Times. So I blame that on the New York Times. So this article is by Rebecca Flint Marks and Ventinus Deduzlis. Good job. Good job. Crushed that name. Good job. First try, right? The young woman was found floating face down in the water about a mile southwest of the southern tip of in Manhattan wearing only red running shorts and a black sports bra. She was barely visible to the naked eye of the captain of the Staten Island Ferry when he caught sight of her head bobbing in the water. It was like seeing a glimpse. It was like glimpsing the tip of a ballpoint pen across a busy city street. Less than four minutes later, a skiff piloted by two of the ferry's deck cans pulled up alongside the woman. One man took hold of her ankles while the other grabbed her shoulders. As she was lifted from the water, she gasped. I went from going for a run to being in an ambulance, the woman said several months later in describing her ordeal. It was like 10 minutes had passed, but it was almost three weeks. On August 28th, a 28, or on August 28th, a Thursday, a 23 year old school teacher from Hamilton Heights named Hannah Emma, Emily up went for a jog alongside the Riverside drive. That jog is the last thing that Miss Up re- says she remembers before the deckhands rescued her from the waters of New York Harbor on the morning of Tuesday, September 16th. Rumors and speculation abounded about what befell Miss Up. She disappeared the day before the start of a new school year at Thursgood Marshall Academy, a Harlem school, where she taught Spanish. She left behind her wallet, her cell phone, her ID, and a host of troubling questions. It was as if the city had simply opened wide and swallowed her whole until she was seen on a security camera at a Manhattan Apple store checking her email. Then she vanished again and then reappeared not only at an Apple store, but also at a Starbucks and several other New York sports clubs where news reports said she had went to shower. She was suffering from, was she suffering from bipolar disorder, running away from an overly demanding job, escaping from a city that can overwhelm even the most resilient. Other questions lingered. Did she forage for food? Where did she sleep? Most baffling of all, how did she survive for so long without money or any identification in one of the world's busiest and most complex cities? That she was rescued alive and well is in itself amazing. Most, most, um, Most such stories do not have happy endings. But the explanation for what had happened raised even more question questions than Miss Up's disappearance had for her more than for anybody. After her rescue, while she was recovering from hypothermia and dehydration at Richmond University Medical Center in Staten Island, she was told that she was suffering from disassociative fugue, a rare form of amnesia that causes people to forget their identity suddenly and without warning and can last for a few hours to years. It's weird, Ms. Up said a few weeks a few weeks ago, and this article is from like 10 years ago, okay. a few weeks ago over a cup of tea in Hell's Kitchen Cafe. The first time in five months since her rescue that she had talked publicly about the experience. How do you feel guilty for something you don't even know you did? It's not your fault, but it's still somehow you. So it definitely made me reconsider everything. Who was I before? Who was I then? Is, is that part of me? Who am I now? An appetite for travel. The answer to that last question, at least on the surface, is a bright, introspective young woman with an easy laugh and an expansive smile. Dressed this day for a job interview, she wore a black blazer and a knee-length skirt that contrasted with the slim silver hoop piercings, her right piercing her right nostril, and the bright red metal wristwatch peeking out from beneath her sleeve. She looked like any other recent college grad, negotiating the rapidly narrowing space between youth and adulthood. Her questions about her identity are, to some degree, no different than those of her peers who haven't had to deal with highly publicized memory loss. When you're just starting out, she said, you have one job to your name. There's your professional identity, and then there's who you are, she said. She may be questioning who she is after her experience. She added, 
But everybody is, she laughed and added, but everybody is, she laughed and added, this is just extra. Before she jogged out of her life that August day, Miss Up had a demanding schedule. The previous fall, after graduating from Bern Mar, she began teaching Spanish to more than 200 7th and 8th grade uh, eighth graders at Thursgood Marshall's Academy while studying for her master's degree in education at Pace University. It was a challenging job, but one she loved. Miss Up also loved to travel. She grew up in a small town in Oregon, the daughter of two pastors, her mother who lives in Philadelphia and her father who is, is in India are divorced. While at college, Miss Up spent a semester in Buenos Aires, visited Ghana, Poland, and Puerto Rico. So you can tell she's just a normal mm-hmm. college kid, right? Right. Last summer, she went to Japan to visit her brother, who is in the <clears throat> Navy, and to New Delhi to visit, I can't say this, town. A, a town in New Delhi. Okay. A close friend of and former uh, classmate. I asked her if she would be okay while I was at work, since she doesn't speak any Hindi, and being a white woman in Delhi can be a bit daunting. But she said in an email message, but as always, Hannah proved me wrong. She hopped off by herself, took a full tour of the old city, admittedly the most difficult part of it, of the city to navigate and met me for coffee afterwards. So she's good. She, right. she can navigate cities. She lives yeah. in the city, right? All of those sorts of things. Right. So this is where the Jason Bourne part comes in. Okay. And you think through it, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. No, it's not cool, but it's kind of interesting. The medical condition diagnosed in Miss Up is so uncommon that if you that few psychiatrists ever see it. It's called the Jason Bourne affliction, characterized in part by sudden and unexpected unexpected travel combined with an inability to recall one's past. Dissociative fugue demonstrates the glass-like fragility of memory and identity. Imagine just hitting your head the wrong way and then you just forget you. Right. Right. Yeah. Totally. That's scary. Its most famous sufferer is the fictional Jason Bourne, the secret agent made flesh on film by Matt Damon. The Bourne character takes his name from Ansel Bourne, a Rhode Island preacher who suffered the earliest recorded case of the condition Hmm. when he was en route to Providence in 1887. The preacher continued to Norristown, Pennsylvania, where he opened a store and lived with another family until one day he just woke up. Interesting. The memory of how to perform mundane tasks like hailing a cab or even using the internet remains intact. Victims lose only the memories tied to their identity. It's as if, it's as if a whole set of information about oneself, our autobiography, goes offline, said Dr. Richard Lowenstein, one of the nation's few exper- experts on dissociative fugue. Hmm. We tend to experience our identity as a thing. As if it's a constant, added Dr. Lowenstein, who is a medical director of trauma of the trauma program at Step Shepherd and Enoch Pratt Hospital in Baltimore. And he has treated five patient, patients with dissociative fugue. But it's it's a lot less stable and has less unity than we want to believe. Travel is a defining characteristic in this. People have been known to not only travel across cities or countries, but also across continents, said Dr. Dr. Philip Coons, professor emeritus of psychiatry in, at Indiana University, in the book and the author of a book on the subject. The explanation behind fugue is that the person is running away from a bad situation, from a bad marriage or a bad financial situation. So there's that stress that can right. something is something's bothering you tr- yeah it triggers your brain to just go offline huh kind of not not fully offline right but just just enough to not mm-hmm. know who you are but still be able to function yeah right you can drive in many instances you can do complex things right you learn you and those are what they kind of get to is those are things that you've practiced over and over and over right you you would know how to and you would know how to type in your email address and we'll get to that here in a minute right, right. but things that you've done hundreds and hundreds of times that sticks right but nothing else right the missing chapter when miss up failed to return to her apartment four days after four days her roommates contacted the police after a week with no word and fearing that she had been a victim of a kidnapping or another violent crime her friends and family posted messages on blogs and started a facebook page called we're not giving up UPP on Hannah, oh. which was dedicated to tracking her down, accompanying many postings with the photograph of a smiling young woman with warm hazel eyes, glossy brown hair, and white rose and a white rose tucked behind one ear. Despite the optimistic tone of the postings, her family was frantic. 
Mm -hmm. At first, you try to come up with any kind of possible theory that could provide a simple, harmless explanation of where she might be, her brother added. But considering the circumstances, you really can't convince yourself that any of them are feasible. And you're left with the unavoidable conclusion that something is very wrong. Mm -hmm. This up credits the police with helping her piece together what happened during the missing weeks. Though, uh, Though details like where she ate and slept remain elusive to her. Security camera footage and conversations with police detectives have provided some clues to where, if not the why. According to the police, Ms. Up spent a lot of time in places like Riverside Drive, where if you're in running gear, no one's going to look at you twice. When she revisited Riverside Drive after leaving the hospital, Ms. Up said, it seemed to make sense to me. Not only is it one of my favorite places, but there's something soothing about the sound of water and not just and just not feeling trapped in a concrete jungle. Miss Up's doctors have helped to make helped her make sense of the clues, like her stops at the Apple Store, where she was seen both checking her email yeah, and that was speaking, made me scratch my head. Right, and speaking with fellow with a fellow Pace student. It was on a computer, but there's no evidence of my Gmail account in my Gmail account of any emails being sent or read. It was just like. So she's she, going through the motion. Did she go into because that's what did she go into her own account or she did she go into, into her account? But she never like her clicked. real own account, but yeah. not her yeah her, she amnesia account. In, okay, but she never clicked on any email. Interesting. Like it's like it would be kind of like going into your email and just reading the lines, but not actually clicking them. Be like right, uh, I don't need to look at anything. Just and just moving on. Right, right. So Miss Up said um, she didn't read any of those emails. Did she? She did log in something her doctors attributed to muscle memory. How many times in our lives have we typed in our name and our password without thinking? So the theory is, so their theory, Miss Up said, is that I thought, hey, this is a computer. This is what I do with a computer. But once she opened her email, email, she couldn't figure out who Hannah was and why everyone was looking for her. So I logged off. I logged out and left. Hmm. Her conversation with the Pace student had a similarly surreal quality. While Miss Up says she does not recall, recall the meeting, a store security camera showed her speaking with a young man who asked her if she was the missing student everyone was trying to find. She said she wasn't. Wow. News reports of her appearances at various New York sports clubs locations suggest she was careful to keep moving, though Miss Up believes that the number of sightings was exaggerated. For one thing, she pointed out she did not have her gym ID on her. For another, the gym that she went to knew she was missing and surely would have contacted the police had she appeared. Depends on who worked in the front desk though. Right. I mean, in how frequently you go there and if you know those individuals right. and all that. That's what that, I'm saying. Right? It depends yeah. on who's working that front mm-hmm. desk, you know, the one tangible <clears throat> clue to the extent of her travels was the large blister on her heel. In addition to hypothermia, hypothermia, dehydration and sunburn, the blister was the only physical record of a three weeks spent on the move. And it suggested why she left the city streets for its waterways. Her feet hurt. They think that just as I was wandering on land, I wandered in the water. Miss Up said, I don't think I had a purpose, but I had really big blisters. So maybe I just wanted to take my shoes off. The rescue. Captain Christopher Covella, a a mariner with 32 years experience and more than 17,000 trips aboard Staten Island ferries, to his credit, was in the pilot house of of the John J. Marchie on September 16th, heading to Staten Island from Manhattan when he saw something out of place. At 11.50 a.m., I noticed something in the water that didn't belong there, Captain Covella said. All it was was a head, and it was slightly more than a quarter mile away. Guy's got good eyesight. Mm -hmm. Slowing down the boat, he instructed two of his deckhands to prepare to enter the water near Robin's Reef, a tiny, tiny outcropping of land topped by a lighthouse just off the north shore of Staten Island. The two deckhands, Michael Sabatino, 28, and Ephraim Washington, 31, hung over the edge of the ferry in a 12-foot aluminum skiff as the captain edged his craft towards the island. About 200 feet away from Miss Up, who was floating face down, the men were lowered into the water when they reached her. Mr. Washington put his hands under Miss Up's arms, turned her face up, and with the help of Miss, Mr. Sabatino, lifted, him, lifted her into the skiff. We realized that she was breathing and had no major cuts or bruises, so we decided to bring her back to St. George, Mr. Washington said. Three minutes, three minutes later, they were in Staten Island Ferry Terminal. After Mrs. Miss Rupp's Miss Up's rescue, newspapers reported that she had jumped off the Staten Island Pier in a suicide attempt. 
The reality, Miss Up said, was far less sensational, if almost as dramatic. Together, Captain Covella, with Captain Covella, she determined that it would have been impossible for her to jump off the pier and swim against the current to the spot where she was rescued. Instead, she believes that she, she left Manhattan from the Chelsea Pier, a kayak dock, where she once had attended a 9-11 memorial. Okay. So there's, she's going to these places where it's It's familiar. Deep in there. Yeah. yeah. From it's familiar to her psyche. Right. <clears throat> from what I can piece together, I left Manhattan late at night, she said. I've gone back over lunar records to figure out if there was a full moon then, which sounds right. At the point in the tidal records, the current would have been in my favor. So whether I was Olympic swimming or doggy paddling, I could have made it. Made it, that is, to Robin's Reef, where she pulled herself ashore after swimming for several hours. She believes that she spent the next day sitting on the rocks around the lighthouse. A theory supported by the fresh sunburns that she had re- she had, she sported when she was rescued. <laughs> she remained on the island until she returned to the water around eleven the following morning. Then she was in an ambulance speeding towards the hospital. When her friends and family arrived, Miss Up said, "It was wow. I'm happy to see you, but why are you so happy to see me?" The day she was discharged, Miss Up posted a statement on the face on her Facebook page for her friends uh, that her friends had created. She said, I needed to publicly acknowledge my gratitude for everything from search parties to people just caring. She said, I did feel that I owed people at least some explanation. I could see that. Right. Mm -hmm. To try and put some of the speculation to rest and do those sorts of things. So in the next steps kind of coming up in her life, she goes on to talk about, she didn't want to go out publicly. She didn't want to be on the Oprah Winfrey show and right. do those sorts of things. So she kind of just like retreated to try and deal with what was happening. Right. Mm-hmm. She, so she stayed out of the public eye. <clears throat> She's done a couple of articles on this, but what it really brings back to you is she didn't want to change her life. She wanted to go back to her normal life. Right. But now she's got this huge story and people started to think she was lying. Right. That's one of the things with this. People start to, to, they want a reason. Right. They want a rationale. And if they can't find a reason, they'll make up their own reason. Yeah, so they're going to say, oh, she was just running away. You don't run away and kind of stay in the same place. Right. Right, for the most part. There are other stories, and I'll, I'll cover one real quick one here in a yeah. few minutes, where <clears throat> somebody literally just disappears and ends up somewhere else. Okay. So she said she doesn't want, she, she didn't want my life to change so in such a way that the things I enjoyed, I couldn't enjoy anymore. She said, I was just, it was just, I can't let New York win. Recovery has been slow, <coughs> simple me. social routines, routines like seeing friends and taking a dance class have helped her reestablish her personal identity. Figuring out her professional identity has been harder because she's always going to have that story. In her yeah. background. There's a lot of room for self doubt and confusion. And well, I don't know. I certainly would never have intended to do that, but it makes you wonder. She said. She wonders, too, about what caused the fugue state. So far, a possible catalyst has yet to emerge. The thing that That's the hardest thing, Miss Up acknowledged. I don't feel confident about the trigger. How do you start with prevention? Mm-hmm. You don't know how mm-hmm. what triggered it. If you work through it, you can usually go on to, learn, to live a normal life. She said, obviously, the hardest part of it is, is the period right after. It's textbook that you feel shame, you feel embarrassed, you feel guilt. All the things I've definitely felt. She has also experienced something rarely afforded to anyone in the city, the chance to slow down. If anything, she said, I've gotten time to really appreciate the normal, what normal life is like. I've never had a moment in my life where I've just stopped and said, hold on, let's reevaluate everything, especially living in a big city like that. It's always, always going, going, going. So Miss Up's friends have no doubt about her ability to move on. They said, if Hannah doesn't want to let this incident eat away at the rest of her life, then it won't be an issue anymore and it'll be just like a common cold. So they also have a kind of a, um, a password, a secret word that they use to make sure that she's okay. Okay. Right? So one of her roommates was um, interviewed and they didn't really use anything in, from the interview except for one real kind of line, right? So my ro- roommate had done this long interview with ABC, and the only thing they ended up printing was that I was a friendly vegetarian who likes to try new, excuse me, likes to try new dishes. So if I don't get <clears> home <throat> one night, they'll text me like friendly vegetarian in quote, and I'll say who likes to try new dishes. And we know we're on the same page. Okay. Right? So that they know, like, okay, she's good. She's not missing. She just she's went not, out. She's not, out. I don't want to say out of her mind, but she's not she not herself. 
turn off or, right. or whatever you want to call She's not, that. not herself, right? right. Yeah, so that's part of that's one of the biggest things. It's, Interesting. They never know. And some of the other ones, here's your iPad. Oh, thanks. Um, some of the other stories that go along with this, right? Are, well, I have a question. Sure, go for it. So she went, was originally, before everything started, she was going for a run. She was just out for a run. Okay. And, and then, then three off. weeks later, she is when they found her in the water. Just floating face down, down. face down for four, at least four minutes, they right. think. I wonder if those four minutes or are not, what. No, no, it wasn't. As, it took three minutes for them to get back. They don't know how long she was. No, that's why I said at least. Some time. Some period. Um, I wonder if that's what had her like, like that, just that little bit of lack of oxygen for a little while, put her like reset her brain. You know how you shut off your computer? I don't know. And you restart it sometimes if like that. Just reset or reconnected her. I yeah. don't know. And then it was like the whole um, <clears throat> checking her email was kind of weird it's without checking her email. Because it's just habitual. Yeah. Right? You do certain things. For me, it'd probably like going to Starbucks and getting a coffee and getting the exact same coffee I would get like and every she time. doesn't or remember. Going to Dunkin Donuts or is something. that part of it? Like you don't remember. So, okay. So you don't know who you are when you're in this state, mm-hmm. right? But you also, when you pop back over, you don't remember anything you don't about remember what that happened time the, period. Right. It's crazy. So it's like, yeah, you just shift. Yeah, it's like using a new comp- computer, like a fresh computer. Yeah. And then you reboot and you go back to your old computer. Right. That's that crazy. Weird? That's yeah. how complex the brain is in these sorts of situations, oh, yeah. right? So there are lots of stories on these on people that have just kind of gone missing. One of the most famous is Agatha Christie. Okay. Who is a writer, of course, right? She had a situation where her mother had passed away. Okay. And this was back in the 20s, right? Right. And her mother had passed away, and then she literally just disappeared, right? And then would turn back up days, 11 days later in hmm. cases, right? But it happened to but her it happened more than once. times, okay. right? So she would just abandon them all over things. She would write notes to people, and then just leave notes, and then just disappear. She would leave notes to people as herself? Yeah. But not knowing she but was she didn't doing know it, she did it. Interesting, right? So it, I think that's called split personality. No, I'm kidding. But um, well, did you put up the Hannah up picture by chance? Cool. Um, the so part of that, right? Like hers, Hannah Ups is probably the most. It's the most recent it, because it made s- such headlines. It was well, yeah, right? and it was in New York City, and it's such like how there's so many cameras. Well, we're such a connected time right? now too. And so. you're talking in 2008, so yeah. there's plenty of cameras everywhere. Right, Apple Store, the yeah. the shops, Hell's Kitchen, whatever it is, right? Um, but there's another one where a gentleman, it's happened to him like four times. Interesting. Jeffrey Ingram. So I guess that's maybe why they decided to do the whole friendly vegetarian. So that they know <clears throat> if yeah, she is, text, since right. it's possible to happen again. <clears throat> I wonder if that's right. just something then you have to live with for the rest of your life. And they, and they put a tracker on you. Happen. <laughs> well, they well, put a tracker kind of, on like a you. Cure, yeah, like a bed uh, something. Yeah. Yeah. Because put an app your, on your phone. But if you leave your phone. But yeah, she left her phone. She, she left, left her key. She left everything. Yep, she just disappeared. So you've got. Which is why they tell you not to do that when you go had running. had a traumatic childhood, uh, Naomi Jacobs. Mm-hmm. And she was, it was in 2008. She awoke one morning fully believing it was 1992. And she reverted back. To her 92 self? To her 92 self. Her, so she was still her, year. but she was almost like in a time warp. Right. She lost memories huh. of the last 17 years of her life. She That's didn't crazy. remember her 11-year-old son. She found comfort spending comfort spending time with her, but she never regained it. Crazy. Right? Just imagine losing 17 oh, years. Oh, she never regained. Like, she never snapped Hers back? She never comes, came back. Another gentleman was found in a uh, Michael Boatwright, was found unconscious in a motel room in Palm Springs. His brain just shut off. He woke up and he was speaking Swedish. He had learned Sweden or Swedish when he was a little kid, when his parents lived there. He lived okay. there when he was a little kid and his brain reverted back to that. Okay. Right. So TBIs and stuff. So like how does he know he was speaking Swedish? Is that what it is? Sweden? Well, they, they pieced pieces of it together they're like they knew who he was his family knew who he was right and they were like he lived in sweden i know but how did he know they were how did they know he was speaking because he was speaking different swedish language? so he was, Amer- he was an american he spoke english I'm, uh, uh, okay i was gonna say when they found him he was speaking swedish mm-hmm. so he still hadn't popped back yet no he okay. was just that's, that's what, what I was he spoke to say. he okay. didn't know what he was doing he, right. he had a, they knew who he was because they found his american passport also huh. in the room then you there's there's I don't want to say tons of cases, but there's a bunch of cases. The lady that drove 33 year, uh, 30, a 33 year old woman, um, she was on 48 hours. She said she literally 
started. It was in 2001. She was driving on a local highway. The next thing she knew was 3.30 in the morning. She was driving. She was 10 hours from her house. Um, she drove from Texas to Santa Fe, New Mexico. She had no recollection of making the journey. Rather than panic, she checked into the hotel for the night. Then it was even worse when she woke up. She woke up the next next morning, not knowing where she was and who she was or where she was or who she was. Right. And you're in this hotel room. Like. So that, she almost had back to like she skipped for 10 hours, woke up, snapped back, got a hotel room. But then the next morning mm-hmm. woke up blank again. Interesting. It's an, it's an interesting situation. <clears throat> this last one here, Renee Lamana. Her family reported her missing January 8th, 1994. Okay. The ex- they explained that she was suffered from occasional states of dissociative fugue. Originally from New Jersey, she was spotted there in 1995 and again in New York that same year. She wasn't spotted again until 2014 in Virginia, 20 years after she first disappeared. So she still was not herself. She's still out there somewhere, right? Um, oh. They So it says they... There have been a handful of sightings from her since then. People who supposedly interact with her say that she said she was from Florida and was in search of her family on the East Coast. Perhaps this is evidence of her search for her home and her family. She supposedly pulls around a small suitcase, suitcase which contains maps of the East Coast. She's believed to have adopted the, several different names over the years, such as Renee Lamont, Jean Smith, and Darlene Hansen. What's her real name? Her real name is Renee Lamana. So her older sister, Margaret Lamana, is hopeful she'll be reunited with her sister one day. Did you look these people up by any chance, like where they're at today? The, well, I didn't. Not in this yeah. case. It's just another I, Well, situation. I just want to like, has this happened to Hannah again? Has she, you know. You know. Be you interesting. hope not, right? Yeah. But there's, I mean, there's people like, it just happens on a regular. I don't want to call it, again, it's not a regular situation, but it happens so frequently that you're like. Yeah. It it's happens. frequent enough for them to be able to Write name stories it and name the situation. Name the, the, I don't want to say disease, but name the episode. Yeah, the disorder. Yeah, it's the a disorder. disorder. Thank yeah, you. the psychiatric disorder, I guess. And they have like right. history of people. But wow, 2014, and she's still not. She's still not. They haven't found her. Interesting. She's in, I don't know if she's homeless or whatnot. Yeah, but that's she's crazy. Moving. She's always on the move, right? Huh. So very interesting wow. kind of situation. That was not, good. Not necessarily scary or creepy, kind of scary. It's, it's that, a little creepy. It's right? kind of like, what? Yeah. yeah. So Awesome. Thanks that's, for tuning in tonight. Just kind of an interesting one that I, like I said, I found myself going down a rabbit hole on. So, of course, you can please go out, like, subscribe to the show. Yes, Check it out on iTunes and Spotify and all of that under the bars open with Beth and Greg. Yep. Thanks, honey, for listening. Yeah, great in. story. I appreciate it, it. We will catch you all next time. Cheers. Bye.